What's up friends and welcome back to the channel. So let's talk about Vegas. Well, more specifically, the Consumer Electronics Show. <laughs> so it was my first time at CES and I gotta say, kind of hard to contain my amazement. I mean, there was just so much to see from hydro powered boats to all sorts of robotic shows and a light extravaganza that was the Tesla tunnel. I mean, it really felt like some sort of outlandish, over the top Disney world for tech nerds like myself. And I could not be more excited, nor could my pal Cody Rawl, AKA my partner in crime for the day. Fun fact, not only is Cody a doctor, a YouTuber, and a fellow brain tech nerd, but he also decided that it would be a good idea to move to Las Vegas. Anyway, we teamed up at CES to explore the health tech scene and basically test out a bunch of new gadgets that haven't been released yet. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you a little behind the scenes look at the top three devices that I am most excited about this year, including a new brain wearable for sleep that looks a lot like the Dream 2, but way cooler. And we're also gonna talk a little bit about timelines and pricing so you know what to expect well before these things come out. So let's kick things off with, well, really a whole new category of wearable tech that I actually think has a lot of potential, and that is neural earbuds. And let me explain. So you know that feeling when you get out of the shower and someone super important, like Andrew Huberman calls, and so you go to tap your Apple Watch, but your hands are still wet. So you attempt to dry them off, but then the screen of your Apple Watch is still wet. So you let the call go to voicemail, but then you realize your voicemail is full because you haven't checked it since 2018. I know guys, we've all been there and it's terrible because no one ever wants to disappoint Andrew Huberman. But the reality is at some point or another, you probably did miss a call, but what if you could use your face to answer the phone? Again, let me explain. So the earbuds you see here, they're designed by this French startup company called Wise Ear. Sure, they're not as stylish or sleek as your Apple AirPods, but what they can do is really unlike anything I've ever seen. Simply clench your jaw and pause a YouTube video or move your eyes back and forth and change a song on Spotify. With these earbuds, you control your phone commands using facial expressions rather than voice or touch. So how does all of this work? Well, embedded in the wise earbuds are these tiny electrodes and they're monitoring all your brain and eye and facial activity. The bioelectrical signals coming from that are then picked up and analyzed by their algorithms which then get translated into controls on the phone. Things like play a song or answer a call. I mean, at first glance, it definitely seems a bit out there, but this type of hands-free neural technology, it really seems to be where the future of audio and certainly VR tech is going. In fact, another company in the space called Neurable they're developing a pair of beat style headphones with embedded brain sensors in it to be able to track your focus and even enable calls using gesture controls. And I gotta say, this thing looks super dope and I'm already on their waiting list and I'm checking in every single day to see when it's available. But in terms of actual release dates, well, both Wiseier and Neurable, they're still kind of in the early prototype phase. So my guess is it'll be another year or so before these finished products come to market. And it even sounds like, well, at least for right now, Wiseier's long-term plan 
is to make their suite of tech available to other earbud and AR companies. So I will be super curious to see which companies actually adopt this technology and then how fast it can get integrated into other devices. Super, super exciting stuff. But moving on to another health product that, well, I'm gonna say I'm a little skeptical about, but could be really cool if it actually works. And that is the Withings U-Scan device. So it is the first of its kind urine test that is completely hands-free because it stays inside your toilet bowl. And don't worry guys, there were no actual demos of this at CES, just in case you were wondering. But the point here is to make urine testing pretty much seamless since the U-Scan is automatically gonna collect your sample upon waking, so you don't really have to think about it. And the way it's gonna work is like this. The U-Scan will have two different testing options, one for nutrition and then the other for cycle syncing. I think they'll probably add some more options down the line, but for right now, I guess their main focus is on metabolic and hormonal health. So every time you take a test, you'll then get a full report in the Withings app that includes a full breakdown of all your biomarker levels and then a list of recommendations for how to improve that day. I think it is a really interesting concept and certainly one that could eliminate a lot of the hassle and waste that comes from using a pee stick every day, but I still had some questions. And luckily being at CES, I was actually able to hunt down a member of the dev team and get some of those things sorted out. What if you share a bathroom with roommates or something? Yeah. It's not a problem. So this is a mono-user device. So we are going to detect any urine that is going to drop in the, in the device. So this is a paper patented shape. So every drops of urine are going to end their journey here, and we are going to detect the urine. But after that, we are going to launch a feature that is called Stream ID, and we are able to recognize the user that is urinating on the product and only collect, collect urine when it's you that is urinating on the product. Really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so wait, so when are we going to see this in, uni in the US? Like this year I, or next year? Maybe I can't yeah. answer oh, to okay. this question. It depends oh. on the FDA, but totally. we are working on it. Okay. So the bottom line, if you live in the US, is don't get your hopes up too high on this thing coming out anytime soon, especially if it still has to go through the FDA. LOL. But if you live in Europe, it is slated to be released at the end of Q2, which is actually great because I'm going to be in London in June and you know I'm going to try to find one and smuggle it back into the United States. Just kidding. I'm not going to do that, but I definitely will test it out. That being said, I've got to warn you, the U-Scan is pretty expensive. I mean, the reader alone costs $500 and then those cartridges that have to be replaced every three months, they're another $30 a pop. So we're talking like, what, $600 plus for a year's worth of urine data? I'm not sure that's the best use of my money at this point. However, I can see the value in having a pretty consistent way of tracking certain biomarker levels over time. So really depending on your goal and then ultimately what you plan to do with the data, Maybe it is totally worth it for you. And then lastly, let's talk about the most exciting thing to come out of CES. Although that might just be for me, but that is the Friends Brain Band. And in this case, Friends is spelled F-R-E-N-Z. It kind of reminds me of the Dream 2 a little bit, except this one is way more comfortable and it actually does a lot more than just sleep tracking. And that's because it has neurofeedback built in, meaning it's designed to both track and stimulate the brain during certain activities like sleep, meditation, and even deep work to help with things like focus, which would be great. And this is kind of the device I have been literally waiting for my entire life. Uh, not gonna lie, Cody and I did spend a lot of time at their booth trying to convince them to let us take one home to test. That was mainly just me 
and it didn't work. But we did, however, get a chance to demo one of their focus programs there. And it tracks everything from your brain signals to eye motion, even your facial movements in real time. It is really quite impressive to see all this data from such a small device. I mean, they even managed to fit bone conduction speakers into this thing, which I tried to test out, but it doesn't quite work when you're in a chaotic place like CES. Anyway, you may recall the Dream 2, it also had a bone conduction feature, and I think that they paired it with pink noise to help with deep sleep, though it wasn't available in the US, and I'm still kind of bitter about that because I never got to try it out, but I am super curious to see what this type of technology actually does for my sleep, among other things like focus. They claim it can actually help reduce sleep latency by 19 minutes, which would be kind of crazy if that's true. I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see on that one. Comfort-wise though, I gotta hand it to them. The friends, it is a major upgrade to the dream headband, even that Philips smart sleep device I tested out like a million years ago. I mean, this band is made with super soft materials and comes with an adjustable strap that actually fits my tiny head for like the first time ever. And it barely feels like anything when it's on. So I could totally see myself wearing this, doing some work for hours on an end, no problem. As for how well it's gonna stay on your head when you're sleeping, again, remains to be seen. But needless to say, I'm pretty excited about this thing. And if you're as excited as me to get your hands on one, the good news is that it should be out in the next few months. Now their website says early April, but you know how these things work. So I wouldn't hold your breath. That being said, the Friends does come with a pretty steep price tag of around $500. And it's still unclear whether or not they're gonna charge a membership fee to access the app. Again, TBD. But I will say, I checked out their site and it looks like they're having some pre-order sales right now. I'm not affiliated with them at this point. I'm just telling you from one consumer to another, you might wanna check those things out if you wanna save a little money. So that is pretty much the uh, wrap on everything CES. I had an absolute blast, was completely overstimulated the entire time. But a huge shout out and thanks to Cody Rawl. If you guys have not checked out his channel, definitely go over, give him some love. He's got amazing content and uh, makes me look like an amateur when it comes to brain tech. So we, we actually filmed a, a interview together. So that'll be coming out soon. And uh, it was just, it was a blast. I am definitely going back next year. So if you are planning to go, maybe leave a comment below. We can organize some sort of nerdy meetup. I don't know if that's weird. I think it's kind of adorable, but it was, it was a ton of fun. So um, thank you again for watching. If you like this video, maybe subscribe, share with a friend, hit the like button, you know, all the algorithmic things. And until we meet again, well, I cannot wait to catch you on the next one.